بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد I hope you're enjoying this series I pray that you are finding a new depth of love for Allah عز وجل through his revelation اللهم آمين Tonight we continue and we have the seventh chapter Al-A'raf Al-A'raf We're told that there are 206 ayat verses to this chapter and the meaning of its name Al-A'raf it is the plural form of Urf Well what does Urf mean? We're told huwa kullu makanin murtafi' that Urf is referring to any place and every place that is elevated so an elevated place Wal-Muradu bil-A'rafi Subhanallah. But the specific meaning for this word with regards to the context of the chapter is that it's referring to this wall or this barrier that is between heaven and hell. And it's going to be that area where the people whose good deeds and their sins are equal. And they're basically right on this middle point that either they're going to go to heaven or either they're going to go to hell because their deeds are equal. Subhanallah, they're kind of like right on the line, unsure of what their outcome is going to be. And the chapter is named after this particular mentioning within the Quran because it is unique to this chapter, nowhere else is this particular context mentioned. What about other names? Ishtuhirat bi surati al-a'raf Naturally, it is famously known by this name. Wa tusamma surat al-miqat It is also known as surat al-miqat. Al-miqat is basically a place, a, an appointed time at a particular place for a particular event to take place. Right? So, in this case, all of what Allah Ta'ala is mentioning but if we look at specifically this aspect of these people who are in that predicament, then subhanAllah, it's as though that is um, what they're talking about or what Allah is talking about with regards to al-miqat, that appointed time and place for what's going to happen with regards to these folks. What to summa suratul mithaq And it is also known as the chapter with regards to the covenant, with regards to the oath. And as far as its general objective, we're told بَيَانُ السُّنَنِ الْإِلَهِيَّةِ فِي التَّدَافُعِ بَيْنَ الْحَقِّ وَالْبَاطِلِ That Allah Ta'ala in this chapter, He mentions, He tells us about His universal laws that He has put in place which defend the truth from falsehood. Well, how about the reason for its being revealed? So it is a Meccan chapter and لَمْ يُنْقَلْ سَبَبٌ لِنُزُولِهَا جُمْلَةً واحدة. So we don't have anything of a reason for the whole of the chapter being revealed at the same time. But again, it is mentioned that for some of the particular verses, there are authentic uh, reasons for them being mentioned. As far as its merits are concerned, the only thing that is mentioned with regards to the merits that is authentic is that whoever, that same hadith, whoever is to have this chapter, whoever is to to memorize it, to learn it, to understand it, to, to, to live by it, that this person is considered a scholar from these seven chapters that is. So naturally, with this being the seventh, after this we're not going to hear that merit being mentioned again. Well, what about the relationship between the beginning of the chapter and the end? We're told, الْإِشَارَةُ إِلَىٰ أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ ذِكْرَىٰ وَرَحْمَةً What we're finding is that Allah is telling us that the Qur'an is a reminder and it is also mercy. In the beginning of the chapter, Allah Ta'ala says, كِتَابٌ أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ فَلَا يَكُنْ فِي صَدَرِكَ حَرَجٌ مِّنْهُ لِتُنْذِرَ بِهِ وَذِكْرَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ He says, this is a book that has been sent down to you so that you have no hardships within your chest and so that you can warn with it and that it'll be a reminder for the believers. And he concludes the chapter saying, Subhana, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ 
تُرْحَمُونَ And when the Qur'an is recited, listen and be silent and pay attention so that you will hopefully receive mercy. So the Qur'an is the focus on both of them and that the Qur'an is a reminder and it is a mercy. But what about the connection between Al-A'raf and Al-An'am? We're told that the connection between both of them is قَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ تَعَلَى فِي خِتَامِ الْأَنْعَامِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَكُمْ خَلَائِفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ That Allah Azza wa Jal in the end of Al-An'am He says and it is He who has made you inheritors of the earth, successors of each other. And He says in the beginning of Surah Al-A'raf وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ He says in the beginning of Surah Al-A'raf we have certainly placed you as stewards with power and authority in the earth. So subhanAllah, it goes back to the aspect of the relationship for us as human beings and our purpose on earth, that Allah Ta'ala has placed us on earth for a purpose and He has placed us in a position of authority to use it for good in that generation after generation, inshaAllah Ta'ala, we would follow in that blessed way. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. We ask Him Jalla Wa'ala that He truly bless us to be from those who benefit from what we have learned and that we put it to the most beautiful of actions as possible. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.